joining that session. Uh, I will start with a short presentation. Um, we are talking today about market consolidation, a German data center market. And from my point of view, the data center is the basis for all our business. It's for IT, for internet, for any kind of applications, whatever you have, you need a data center. And uh, therefore, that's the fundamental basis for us. So, um, Judith uh, introduced me already. And you know that I've, I was working for several um, competitors. So I have a long track record and I've seen uh, three consolidation waves and I want to talk uh, to you about that. And please follow me through a journey through time. But um, before I'm starting with that, um, you know, data center is not only about power cooling security, it's about trust and confidence. That's a completely different message, and we've talked earlier today about the do's and don'ts in German business. Uh, so uh, trust and confidence is what we like in our business as well. So, uh, as mentioned, journey through time, starting in 95. Why 95? 95, uh, several things happened, and I will talk about that. And it was a little bit when, when our data center business started basis for that. Microsoft, for example, they've introduced uh, Windows 95. Bill Gates was at CBIT in Hanover. CBIT is just um, at the same uh, week now as World Hosting Days. But um, in 95, CBIT was for eight days. Whole eight days. Long, long, long. 755,000 visitors. That was a new record at that time. So... <clears throat> It's amazing how uh, busy 95 was. Um, DKIX. DKIX started 95 as well. I, I, I think, I hope you know that ECO is running the DKIX as well. And that's the largest internet exchange worldwide in terms of peak traffic. So 95 was an important year for us as well. Intel. Intel introduced their um, uh, Pentium processor. Do you remember how powerful the CPU was? 120 megahertz. Anybody has had, at that time, 95, uh, um, a computer, a PC with a, a Pentium processor? really proud right in 95 we have been really proud about that so i have here an iphone 6 you know how powerful that is twenty times more than twenty times more so my kids have more powerful smartphones they don't have an iphone but anyway they have more powerful uh, uh, smartphones than we have had in those times. So Moore's law, everybody knows that, is still valid, and it goes dramatically. We are talking now about data uh, of setabyte. I'm a physicist, Judith said that, but I needed to look up what is setabyte. It's a 10, it's, it's a one with 21 zeros behind. Unbelievable, and it's still growing fast. So, um, I was working for Teleglobe, 2000, back in 2000. They have had big, big plans for data centers across Germany. We have had an opening ceremony in Munich in 2002. It was fantastic. Um, two, three months later, uh, headquarters filed for Chapter 11, went bust. So, you all know these stories about what happened after the dot-com boom. Redbus Interhouse, one of our competitors at that time. Some of you may remember that name, others not, because uh, in uh, 2005, 2005, 2006, Redbus and Telecity merged together, and uh, the name Redbus um, went out of the um, market. So th these are examples what happened 
uh, in those times. I don't want to repeat all the uh, companies filed for Chapter 11, filed for receiver chip like Digiplex, Exodus, City Reach, etc. But we have seen a lot of data center suppliers with big, big, big um, ideas how they can uh, dominate the market. All of them went bust in the period between 2000, 2001, 2002. There was a lot of vacant space at that time. Uh, there was a study that in those times the data center space was only uh, used or rented 14%, one four. One four of these huge investments was rented, brought money, cash, and 86 was vacant. So, I've mentioned Telecity Group. Uh, Telecity Group, I started with Telecity Group uh, back in 2002. And uh, my first visit in London, they've showed me how many data centers they want to build Europe-wide, globally. It was 45. But at that time, 2002, nobody has had money. So, they have had nine data centers in seven cities at that time. Now, 14 years later, they are back to 45, so the initial plans, but just have uh, been bought by Equinix. So the, the merger at that time between Telecity and Redbus, and I was a, a, a part of that, was not in order to get new markets, new um, regions, new cities. The merger at that time between Telecity and Redbus was only in order to save money. Telecity and Redbus in, in these days have been in exactly the same places, in exactly the same cities. It was only to get more economies of scale. It was to save overhead costs at the headquarter, only one board, only one finance, one marketing, one everything, and only one overhead in each country. One managing director, I've lost my job because of that. Uh, one CFO, etc., etc. So that was, fr from my point of view, the, the, the first wave of the consolidation really because of the financial trouble, uh, the financial necessity to save money as much as possible. That was 2005, 2006, one example of these, merger, these kind of mergers. But shortly after, um, I'm missing now one name, but that will come in a minute. Um, Equinix bought IX Europe. And that was, from my point of view, the second wave of consolidation, simply because Equinix has had no presence in Europe. It was completely different uh, motivation for that consolidation, for that uh, M&A activity. So they wanted to have that uh, presence in uh, Europe. They did it. They bought it 2007, 2008. Uh, Digital Realty um, is, is still looking to enter the German market. They've just published, they've bought Lend, next to uh, my friend Julian. Um, and eShelter was uh, bought by uh, NTT. So the um, Asian companies are coming into um, Europe, into Germany. The US companies are coming into um, Europe and Germany. Uh, they want to take part of the cake. Another nice one is Interaction. I've mentioned Telecity was bought by Equinix, but the initial idea was, last year, Interaction and Telecity want to wanted to merge. That would have been the player in Europe. Both of them kind of 45 data centers in Europe. Both of them very big, very profitable. Um, the discussions between the two boards were really close. They've already uh, filed for acceptance for that merger. But then Equinix did a great, great punch because they stepped in and they offered uh, 3.5 billion US dollar for Telecity. And that was, from my point of view, the third wave of consolidation because now we are talking about market dominance. 
the clinics simply don't want to allow these players uh, to be dominant in the European market. Equinix, with the purchase of uh, RX Europe and other purchases, um, is a strong player in Europe uh, uh, and in Germany anyway. Well, they wanted to um, be the biggest one, they wanted to stay the biggest one, and they have clearly identified that this is a threat to their strategy. So they've stepped in. The deal is done now. Uh, they have to deinvest some sites. So uh, it's um, five sites in London, two in Amsterdam, one in uh, Frankfurt. Um, maybe a new player will come into Europe, into Germany as well. Uh, but this is the third wave of consolidation, as you can see. And there are a lot of rumors that interaction will be bought by somebody. It seems that they're frantic for a deal. The shareholders want to make money. They have a clear exit strategy. Um, but as mentioned, Digital Realty is going into the market. Uh, an unknown investment company called Capital Reed from Singapore is investing in Germany. So you will see a lot of new players. And um, uh, we'll talk about Senyum and Julian King in a, in a minute. Um, he came into the German market as well, two years ago. So a lot of dynamic. And last but not least, Telehouse, the company I'm representing, they have been in Germany. They have had three small data centers. They de-invested that. And then uh, January 2012, they came back and bought Databerg. And Telehouse, Judith mentioned, KDDI. Telehouse is part of KDDI. KDDI is second largest mobile operator in Japan. Another Asian company who wants to have a presence in Germany. So you will see a lot of more uh, dynamic in the data center market and not only in the data center market, the same is happening at the moment in the hosting market as well. Look at Host Europe. The World Hosting Days started uh, with Intergenia. Intergenia was bought by Host Europe and maybe on a monthly basis you can see other M&A activities from Host Europe as well. So a lot of uh, dynamic in these markets. So, dot-com boom, uh, I've talked about what happened in 2000. I can tell you NASDAQ, I didn't uh, look at the l last numbers, but NASDAQ is still is, is, uh, back to the level they have been just before the dot-com boom, 5,000. Don't know whether it's 4.5, 4.8 at the moment, but it was at 5,000 in December last year. So it's back, but stronger uh, as before. So I think the ITC industry is stronger than ever. We'll see a lot of movement. We'll talk about that in the panel discussion in a minute. And last but not least, um, part of our success in Germany and Frankfurt is because of DKICS. Uh, I have to mention that here. <laughs> And um, looking at the figures, I mean, 2003, 16 gigabit per second peak traffic. Isn't that cute? 16, one six. Now they had more than five terabit per second peak reached December last year, and it's still ongoing. So that's part. I didn't want to cover everything. It was just a teaser presentation. And now... Um, if you would be so kind, Judith, to change, I'm inviting my panelists. I've seen him already, Frank Zachmann, Chairman of the Digital Hub Frankfurt Rhine Main. Welcome, Frank. <laughs> Take your seat. Julian, I've mentioned your name as well. Julian King, Managing Director of Senium Germany GmbH. Welcome, Julian. Marco, ah, here, chairman of uh, Luxembourg CIX. Thank you very much for coming, Marco. And last but not least, uh, Dr. Thomas Fischer, principal IT architect from Norris Network AG. Thank you. So, 
I will give the micro to one of you. Please share it so that everybody can understand. <coughs> so, gentlemen, you've heard a lot about what I said. Uh, I think most of that is not new to you. What are your ideas? Who wants to start? What do you think about the German data center market? So I, I'll take the start. Um, I believe we, we are blessed to work in an industry where we have such tremendous growth rates in general. We talk about the IT in itself, double-digit growth numbers. Um, however, the sheer infrastructure layer of it is growing by 12%. So we are a bit below the threshold, which is still good, but which is one of the signs when we talk about consolidation that this is also um, a part if the data center providers want to maintain their growth rate, they need to think different. And this is one of the underlying reasons why either they try to become bigger by building bigger or by getting bigger with um, acquisitions. So this is just represented what you just said and what we all see in the market. Julian? Um, well, I would certainly concur with your observations, and I think uh, from my point of view, I uh, was with Global Switch and I think left as you arrived, so I was with Global Switch from 2002 to 2007. Um, I would completely agree, 2002, I think it was touch and go that even Global Switch survived. It was uh, through the uh, benefit of our parent company who had deep enough pockets to uh, fund the times when... Uh, we went from 75% occupancy. We actually we dipped to 17, so we didn't get quite to 14. But it was it was not a good uh, it was not a good period. But um, the market then did start to come to life a little. But um, I think you know the other thing I would add, and I think your you know your assessment of the consolidations. But I think you could also layer into that. Um, how customers have evolved in types of the diff different customer groups. Um, have come through at different periods of uh, the evolution of our of our sector, and you know certainly in the UK in the period from sort of 03 to 07, it was very finance driven. It was uh, all about the banks looking for secure, um, resilient locations after 9/11, having diversity, and that drove a lot of the uh, a lot of the demand. So if you get to where we are today, and I think the uh, the example with DKIX is is actually very very telling in this. I think a lot of this consolidation is now being driven by creating customer groups because we talk a lot about communities, communities of users in data centers, and you know Equinix have been at the forefront of that. Um, yourselves at Telehouse have been in the forefront of that. But it's allowing people to uh, be in the same building to peer. And this is what's driving it. So I think it's the evolution of, of cloud. It's the way services are delivered now, the importance of connectivity. And I think it's interesting. In the early days, connectivity was really important. Um, we then went through a phase where as long as you had two or three carriers on site, you could deliver a point-to-point -point connection between several locations. That's all you needed. But it's not about that anymore. It's about carrier density. And I think this is going to be a really important factor in terms of how the the industry evolves over the coming years. Thank you, Julian. So, gentlemen. Well, maybe as the alien in the in the round here, I can give an outsider view. So, uh, following the data center space, uh, the German data space, center space since 2000, uh, since I started in this space, I really have to see that, well, I saw all these waves of, of, of ups and downs. And um, I have to say that today, uh, Besides maybe maybe the energy challenge and energy price challenge you, you are facing in Germany, uh, you have an extremely consolidated uh, and extremely uh, positive market. But I see over time, um, seeing this as an outsider, see that uh, that well you know it as better than me that the energy prices are driving are driving the business and 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 will be in the future. The decision will be taken where the future data centers are standing are, are more and more driven into 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 that sector, and uh, I think that's one of the biggest challenges I see in in in, in the data center market in Germany. Yeah. I, I would be interested, Thomas, because Norris is is um, uh, working in Nuremberg mainly, so outside of the big city Frankfurt, the capital. What is your experience? 
Well, I want to uh, add, add to the point you made. Um, I guess uh, one thing is acquisition and merger for the consolidation, but also internal growth. Uh, Norris Network always had the strategy to internally grow, and our main idea is do it by innovation. So our data centers in our data center in Nuremberg is, uh, I think, a very innovative uh, cooling concept, and uh, currently we're building it in Munich. So we we are starting to go to the bigger cities. So I guess innovation is another very important um, growth factor and um, issue for the future. So especially for, um, based on the raising energy costs, I think if efficiency in building your data centers is driving the business in the future. Uh, Marco and Thomas, you've mentioned both the energy cost. And I mean, I'm complaining on a regular basis about the high uh, uh, power cost here in Germany. But is it really something which hinders our business? Or is it only a very small effect and yes, we are complaining, but that's it? Well, that's something I cannot answer. <laughs> Well, I think it, it's, a, it's a standard factor we have here in Germany and you just have to find solutions to cope with that higher cost factor. And I guess looking around, at the high, for example, at the hyperscale players and learning from their um, disruptive ideas how to build data centers can uh, improve how we cope with that cost. So being German and being proud of German in engineering capabilities in, in general, however, I have to contradict in a way that uh, it, it's not only about running the most energy efficient data center because probably we all reach a, a level of energy efficient, uh, efficiency where um, the difference in between running a data center in um, a Nordic company or in, in, in Germany is something which can be neglected towards the fact what kind of business is being conducted in that data center and what's the value of that business. So um, yes, I do face the same discussions and I, I hope and pray and I fight for uh, getting rid of our burden of the energy pricing and we see that uh, this is not to our favor. Um, but I also really kind of want to stress that point that um, just by taking the political view on the discussions I had with uh, some of the members of the uh, German parliament uh, was their reply like, okay, you just have to build more energy efficient data center and the problem will uh, solve by itself. Uh, probably not. So a good data center can be built everywhere, not just in Germany. Julian, what is your experience with the uh, power pricing here? Um, yes, it's challenging, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and I, I would agree with you that uh, you know we're all buying predominantly the same pieces of equipment and putting them together to, to provide a resilient service, and they're all going to operate at roughly the same efficiency. So there's not going to be something that there is a magic secret that one data center is going to be so much more efficient than the other. Um, you know, I suppose you've got to sort of look at the different levels, but any business which doesn't necessarily have to be in Germany and has the opportunity to go into a location where power is much cheaper, is going to look at that very seriously. And, you know, personally, we have lost business where companies have decided to go into Amsterdam, where the power is dramatically cheaper, um, have gone into the Nordics. We've all seen those examples. So, yes, it's an issue. So what it means is that, uh, you know, we've got, on the one hand, um, privacy laws, which is, uh, which is meaning that, we need, that businesses need to store data in Germany, they have no choice. But the fact is, it is a cost, and it's one that they don't have to bear in other locations. Thank you, Julian. So power cost is an issue, but maybe not the main one. What are the um, influences for our data center market going forward? Where do you see the challenges, the threats, uh, the chances? So the, the chance, if uh, I, for example, take Frankfurt as the biggest data center market in Frankfurt, is that um, if I try to sum up all of uh, just kind of the projects I refer to, there is more than uh, 200 million potential investments in data center build-outs at the moment being somewhere in the air in Frankfurt. So I believe we have a pretty good um, opportunity on the one side. 
but on the other side this needs to uh, be synchronized with uh, many other topics like do we have the space, do we have the fiber, do we have the power, do we have uh, the general infrastructure as well as do we have uh, the skilled labor forces. So all of these kind of um, known uh, buzzwords are still valid and true, especially if, uh, say one example, where uh, one company being a member of the Digital Hub is actually planning to, to build a data center and all of a sudden, due to uh, the recent discussion about um, actually affordable space of living in Frankfurt, the city comes around and says, well, we might just better build a um, living area, a housing area, or a school somewhere. These are also discussions we, we have to fight in the interest um, of a balance in between our industry and, and the other um, real um, interests as well. So that this is something where, where I think is the positive problem to bear with is how can we cope with the demand quick and efficient enough. Is there still such a big demand? Do you see that? But all, do you see such a big demand still? Well, I think uh, the the demand shifts a bit, uh, layers, uh, up up layers. Uh, let's look at the cloud. So I think I think the the big cloud players are a major issue for uh, for a traditional data center business. So I, I guess it's not only about providing white space anymore. It's about the services you provide upon that white space. And so, there, well, I think cloud computing and building infrastructure as a service and providing infrastructure as a service and have an API you, for your data center is the next step in this, in this evolution. Any ideas to that? Sorry. Um, yeah, I think um, that, that's the point, uh, what, what uh, my colleague here is saying. There is... Um, the need to the commoditization, uh, which is going on, is is just so strong that today uh, an, an internet customer don't cares about so much anymore where, where where he has his servers or where he is just wanting to have a service or just wants just taking the AWS uh, uh, example. They they just they're not caring about this anymore. And I think today the market or the data center market is still very fragmented between the banking, the, uh, the institutional uh, customers, and maybe the internet customers. But I think everything moves into, uh, or all the sectors are moving, or fra fractions are moving into the way where they say, we don't care about data centers such, that's electricity. <laughs> we just care about um, the access, the APIs, and how we can access uh, the whole thing. Today, you could see AWS as the API, as the as the commodity of the future. If you just talked with a customer of mine like yesterday, telling me that he is uh, switching off and on and off lab environments for t trainings. So in the morning, 8:30, he just runs them up. 1800 in the evening, he runs them down, and he just pays for his hours. So it makes him a dramatic cost uh, savings. And these kind of models are getting so important that. Um, the data center as such in the internet space right now is getting transparent. And just in addition to that, that notion of the cloud, I believe that that kind of demand is also um, consolidating in a way, not just towards the cloud, but um, also um, towards certain geographics. We heard about the, the, the cost advantage of the Nordics, but in, in general, um, also taking uh, my experience working for previous co-location companies um, is that there's always some city which is kind of more or less in, in the point of interest and right now um, the German market and Frankfurt specifically is in the interest because all of the big hyperscale cloud providers came there. Why? Because um, the customers are there. So um, this is uh, something where the cloud is going to follow their customers and now we are into such a hot market here in Germany where I see demand is just kind of concentrating whereas in, in some other European cities like for example Paris it, it's not that much of a hype at the moment. That may change in future but for now yes to answer your question Bela there is demand yes. But um, coming back to the question um, strengths, weaknesses, threats and opportunities where do you see them Julian? I'd come back to connectivity again because I think, um, you know, look at what the cloud 
providers want. They want to be able to um, deliver their products with the lowest levels of latency and the most on the most cost-effective uh, uh, environment. So um, again, it comes back to the statistics that DKICS publish. It, it, that's proof enough that the traffic is uh, is coming through Frankfurt. The cloud providers want to be here because that's where the traffic is emanating from. And I think once you build a momentum like that, it's very difficult to stop it. It because it just keeps growing and growing. Um, you know, interestingly, you know, Frankfurt as a as a hub, it serves so many different regions. Um, we as a business also have a, a location in Turkey, in Istanbul, and the, the, the amount of traffic between Frankfurt and Istanbul is, is immense, much, much bigger than I ever, ever expected. And that is because Frankfurt is such an important uh, gateway, um, not just for Europe, but also for Asia and the US. Where do you see uh, the, the future for our data center market? Do you see more consolidation? Um, I've, I've talked about the three waves of consolidation, but on the other hand, we see new players, and also you, Julian, are a fairly new player after two years. Digital Realty is coming into uh, Germany, into Frankfurt. Uh, Capital Read invested. Um, th there might be other players, Asian or US players, coming into Germany. So, is there more consolidation, more fragmentation? Um, that's an interesting, it's an interesting question, and uh, um, you know, just to put my viewpoint, I think we've seen one or two interesting features as well, and particularly, um, I would look back to last year, and if you take Digital Realty Trust, who have been, they've really been a real estate company providing specialist services. That's that's the core of their business, but. I think what was really interesting was their acquisition of Telex in the US, which was a complete departure from their philosophy of the past. So I think what we're going to be looking at in the future is how our businesses are going to be shaped by customer demand and in what areas of, that, of the business or the industry that we want to operate in. So um, you, know, you may find that some businesses are really just focused on the very large scale deployments for the big cloud operators, not really providing many services um, because these, these types of users run their facilities 24 by 7 anyway. But then you've got the other end of the spectrum where you have uh, customers who, do, who require services, they require connectivity services, they require peering. So I think that uh, you're going to see an evolution where data centers will, will start serving different elements of the market. And once you get that, I think um, they will specialize in different areas. And that, there will be a period where each one will grow their businesses, and then you'll see another wave of consolidation. But that di digital realty and telex acquisition, I think, is a, is a clear signal that services are becoming more important in the data center. Any other opinions, gentlemen? <laughs> Full agreement? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Julian. <laughs> that was one shot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're talking about uh, not only consolidation, but the growth rates. We've mentioned 10, 12 percent. If I'm looking at the ITC industry, I think the growth rates are very, very different. If you're looking at um, um, connectivity, bandwidth, price erosion. If you're looking at server pricing, price er uh, erosion. So I, I <coughs> what drives our business in the future to keep that growth rate of 10, 12% each year? Well, I could start by just saying, I think, you know, what we witness is the benefits of IT services, even on a personal basis. You know, you talked about the smartphone and the power of the smartphone that we all have in our, in our jacket pocket. But, you know, compared to 10 years ago, look how much you do online, you just do a with your phone or your iPad. You don't go to the bank anymore, you just do it all online. So I think what's going to happen is that you've got these armies of developers who are continually coming up with new ideas, new services, new ways that we can use the internet. Um, the internet of, of things is very much the uh, topic at the moment, how we, you can control even your heating in your house. The growth is because there's going to be so many new ways that we can utilize the internet. And I think that's what's going to continue driving it for the foreseeable future. And, and, and just to add on that, if we talk about, um, yeah, we, we have uh, developed a pretty good 
connectivity proposition in our country. We have um, now all of the cloud players um, there. Now it's uh, the face of the enterprise adoption, and uh, this is not just only about the, the, the Internet of Things, but if I take the, uh, the global data center census, we still have about 8 million in-house data centers and only 500,000 uh, um, co-location data centers. So there will be a shift towards the, these kind of co-location data centers, so our market in itself, just driven by the fact that all of these applications, if I talk to um, any of the CIOs and I've spent the last couple of weeks um, also developing uh, the, uh, the enterprise uh, understanding for, for my employer, um, which is just so massive in a way that um, I spoke to a, a CIO of a German uh, car manufacturer who said, my issue is not how do I connect the cars or how do I actually um, connect the network, how do I distribute my data in order to cope with all of, Julian, what you said about the potential applications of it um, and to apply, um, Cisco called it kind of uh, the, the idea of uh, fog computing, not only up in the clouds, but really starting somewhere down to the bottom to just collect all this data will create such a massive demand um, into consolidated uh, co-location data centers that this will be one of the massive drivers for the enterprise world. Yeah. I totally agree uh, with what was said and I would like to add uh, maybe a, mo a little bit of provocative thought with this that we are, uh, which will also drive the German market in the next uh, few years will be an, a, a comeback of the more protection, protectionism of, of, of markets and of regulation. So with, with such a large market you see, well, with 80 million people in such a strong industry, uh, and an economy which, uh, which uh, Germany has, there, there, will be, there will be forces uh, drawn bringing business to, 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 uh, to Germany which was not thinking about this uh, some, some years ago. And I think that was all, all will always be, also be a driver in, in, in the growth. Yeah, I think <clears throat> we already had a, the topic IoT as a, as a current driver for new applications and new demand for data center space and, of course, services upon the, uh, the sole data center space. But there are also the next disruptive waves on the, on the horizon. I'm thinking about uh, autonomous driving as a, a, fa as a new um, technology wave, I guess, that needs very much computing power centralized in the different data centers. And uh, the virtual reality is also a new application which needs immense computing power and immense storage power to, uh, to provide the services. And I guess these are the next waves we will face uh, and they will drive the demand for data center space. Just looking at Thomas and Marco, um, we're talking a lot about the data center capital in Germany is Frankfurt. You are not in Frankfurt. You're, uh, you're proud to be um, not countryside, but in a tier two city, let's name it that way. Uh, Luxembourg is, is very proud about their data center, but by far not as large as Frankfurt. So how do you see the uh, um, evolution of the German data center market, not only talking about Frankfurt, but about Nuremberg, Luxembourg, whatever. Sorry, Luxembourg is not... Uh, <laughs> Germany. Yeah. <laughs> don't, I, I, don't for for here, don't, I have officially to deny that. So <laughs> otherwise, I will not <laughs> drive home tonight. I, I think I think there is um, into into regards to the Luxembourgish market. Uh, we started from nothing in 2000. Bill and myself, we we met the first time because I wanted to bring these guys to Luxembourg, and he said, "Yeah, would be fine, but." I would need uh, an internet connection, which is uh, worthwhile talking about uh, to that country and. Klaus uh, Lodefeld uh, t tried to tackle that uh, some years before. So, yeah, uh, and, and today we have the highest density uh, in Europe of, of tier 4 data centers, which is on one hand side, there are seven, seven tier 4 data centers, on one hand side very positive. On the other hand side, yeah, it is Luxembourg, so our, our approach is really getting international business into, into Europe more than getting business from Germany to Luxembourg, which makes absolutely no sense, especially as we're talking about protected markets more and more, and we're talking about the, the German cloud, the, the, the Dutch cloud, and I don't know what cloud, so, so there, there are these two, there's these two different different approaches. So from, from our angle, 
seeing seeing Frankfurt is always the 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 absolute role model of 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 how how should how things should be run uh, even in regards to Amsterdam or to London. Uh, and and well, we try, we play a little little niche role which we like uh, we like to to uh, to work on. Is Nuremberg a niche as well? Well, uh, um, I think uh, we had a discussion about um, mo um, enterprises moving into co-location data centers, and I think many of those uh, those companies still um, prefer locality, so they can go into the data center if it's just a, a white space or co-location. And I guess that's a, a niche role which we currently fill in Bavaria. Um, and with bandwidth growing and transfer rates uh, growing in, uh, over the one, um, I think it's not an issue and not that of an issue to be in Frankfurt. The, uh, the distance between Frankfurt and Nuremberg is not that far, so the latency we get is not that of a problem, I think. Okay, so we are coming to an end. We have a few minutes left. Um, I would like to ask you the question, where do you see the data center industry in five years from now on? I don't want to ask ten years. Five years is good enough. So one is then we can answer your question about will there be another way for consolidation because yes, as, as Julian said, I, I believe it will take a couple of years. Um, the data center industry in itself um, will look back to um, 2016 and say, was it just 5.2 terabit per second? How cute was that? <laughs> So, Marco, Julian, Thomas. I, I think I think the cost pressure will will go on as it will commoditize, and 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 there there will be uh, actually through that will be consolidations. On the other hand side, the market will, as the data are growing, it will grow. So so it's 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 a very positive outlook, but it will it will come up with very new challenges, especially around the whole uh, commoditizing thing. Well, I think um, the consolidation will not be only horizontal, but also vertical. So if we look at the cloud, um, the demand is for software engineering. So I guess uh, it will not be only horizontal where data center providers uh, merge, but also data center providers and software engineering companies will merge because of the services uh, you want to provide. If, if the, the, the way into the cloud goes on, you need, you need to provide an API for your data center and it's just software engineering work. So I guess that's one of the ways it can go. Uh, I think the challenges will be different for, um, for different players in the, in the sector. I think you know, to Thomas's business is actually probably quite different from our business in terms of how we do so. You know, from our point of view and being in a, in a, in a central location in Frankfurt, um, we, have, we, we know this very significant demand and the type of demand that Frankfurt attracts, which will be different to, to the types of demand that will be in Nuremberg, but both are just as important in terms of the overall services which are being which are being offered. So I think you know we'll we'll just have a, you know certainly for the foreseeable future we just see a lot of demand which will all be uh, will all be looking to service and we'll be coming up with variations around the theme. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And uh, before I'm uh, finishing that session, I would like to ask you, do you have any questions to these uh, guys here? Klaus? Understood, Klaus. Any ideas? So, um, 
coming back to um, the group of people we, we have here, I believe this represents the, the intended answer. So if, if I would go around and just uh, talk to an enterprise um, decision maker and say, come on, I've got co-location in Frankfurt, uh, this wouldn't answer his story. So um, typically those guys would need to have distributed data centers, whether they all will be in just one city, I doubt. Um, but this is why, why the market is so dispersed. Um, as, as a um, community of providers, we will be able, and we, we have to do this, to um, supply them with distributed data sets and data centers. Does that answer your question, Klaus? So I think at the moment the, the demand is for these huge data centers, and we've mentioned that the uh, the the the, the hyperscale uh, players like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, etc. But uh, in five years, the uh, world will change. Well, perhaps I may add. Uh, it depends on the application. If I I can imagine, if we we go down the virtual reality road, um, there will be the need for larger content distributed more locally to the, to the end user. So I can imagine that if this uh, hits the road, um, it can be cost efficient or just needed to build very small data centers in each city to provide the large amounts of content to the users in a, in a very low latency fashion. But currently I don't see the application. Thank you. Any further questions? So I think that's really a continuation of, this, of the subject we've just been talking about. And I think you're already, you, you're already seeing, starting at the very top level, you, you mentioned a Google. Well, I think if you'd asked Google five years ago, they would have been saying, no, we're just going to have uh, regional data centers that are absolutely massive, and they would be in the Nordics, and they would serve all of Europe from a massive facility such as that. But what we've seen, what we're seeing now is that they are entering into countries. now. They're small data centers in their terms, but in anybody else's view, they're massive data centers. So, you know, for Google, they're saying, okay, we'll come to Frankfurt. So we probably only need 10 or 15 megawatts, you know. But when you look at their overall compute and their overall power requirements, that's relatively small. So I think that process has already started about having a distributed network. I think um, in addition to that, what you're also going to see is an evolution whereby Countries that may have been serviced via infrastructure in a Frankfurt, in a London, but you're going to start see, seeing countries which have historically had very little stock of data centers starting to build their own stock. And that comes back to the cost of delivering the content and latency. So, you know, you can look at um, countries with large populations, high adoption of internet, high internet penetration, and I think you'll see that those will become real hotspots for future development. That won't take anything away from the, the, the core hubs as they stand today, but I think that'll just be the evolution as to how these, the, and it comes back to communities and how you, the, the importance of peering and delivering the content to the customer in the best way possible is going to take precedence. So, thank you very much. Time is over. Uh, thank you, Thomas, Marco, Frank, and Julian for your participation and your contribution. Thank you very much.